Next to me is the Lamborghini Aventador Ultimate the last naturally aspirated V12 non-hybrid Lamborghini ever. Picture an SVJ in an Armani suit with even lower production numbers. It's hard to believe the Aventador came out 12 years ago. When it was first released in 2011, it captured the hearts of automotive enthusiasts across the world. It was the ultimate poster car. In fact, I literally had an original Aventador poster in my college dorm room. At the heart of the Ultimate is a six and a half liter naturally aspirated V12 making 769 horsepower and 531 pound feet of torque. Now in a world of super sedans making a thousand horsepower and hypercars making 1600 horsepower, 769 horsepower doesn't sound like all that much. But the glorious sounds this makes, the excitement, the drama, the responsiveness of the engine puts to rest any claims of, oh, my Tesla Plaid is faster. That may be the case, but this is cooler and way more fun to drive. At 769 horsepower, this is the most powerful V12 Lamborghini ever created, minus the ones with hybrid assist like the Sion. In fact, this even has 10 horsepower more than the track-focused SVJ. Think of this as kind of a GT3 Touring. It's a wingless SVJ that's a bit more comfortable. Instead of the harsh bucket seats, it comes standard with comfort seats. It's a little more subdued, if you could call an Aventador subdued. A little bit less aggressive in the front, kind of Aventador S styling, but those massive vents are straight off of the SVJ. And because we don't have that massive rear wing, we have a gnarlier rear diffuser. Interestingly, the rear wheel steering has been recalibrated for the Ultimate. At the limit, the SVJ and SVJ Roadster had a little bit of an overzealous rear wheel steering, but they fixed that completely in the Ultimate. This car honestly is porn on wheels. There's not a single bad angle. It's honestly hard to pick your favorite element of the car, whether it's the front, the back, the doors, the engine. Well, let's go ahead and hop inside, check out the interior and take it for a drive. But before we do that, huge shout out to Wheels Boutique in Miami for making this video possible. They're an awesome shop, awesome guys to work with. If you want any custom modifications on your car, new wheels, exhaust tunes, they're the go-to place to go. Inside the Aventador Ultimate now, and the Aventador platform's interior is starting to show its age, but it still looks futuristic to some degree. I love the little Y patterns in the seat, the contrasted white piping and stitching. We do have a semi-updated infotainment, although it's not the best. We've got Strata, Sport, Ego, and Corsa, different driving modes. One of my favorite parts about the car is this totally superfluous but epic fighter jet or nuclear launch code style start stop button where you have to flip this up and then you click the button right here. I've never been a massive fan of the way the steering wheels looked in the Aventadors, mostly because of the shape of the airbag. I think it's a little bit awkward, but you know what? I don't care about any of that. Let's take it out on the road and see what it's like to drive. As we exit this park, it gives me the perfect opportunity to talk about some of the negatives about the Aventador before we get it out on the road and show you what it's truly all about. This car still has the infamous single clutch ISR gearbox. As manufacturers have moved to dual clutches, which are smoother around town, faster shifts, the Aventador, because of the way the car was architected with that V12 and the way they positioned the transmission, it couldn't actually accept or fit packaging wise a double clutch transmission. Now that has been resolved and updated for the Revuelto, the successor to this car, which is very, very exciting. But at the same time, the ISR gearbox single clutch will be missed in this Aventador. So driving it around town in Strata mode, while it has improved over the years compared to when the first Aventador came out back in the day, it's gotten a little bit better. But essentially it feels like somebody learning how to drive a manual for the first time. It kind of bucks you back and forth. It's really odd between shifts and the shifts happen very, very slowly when you're in strata mode. The gearbox is good at one thing and that is full throttle shifts in Corsa mode and it's exceptional at them. This gearbox provides more drama than any other gearbox I've ever experienced. There's honestly nothing quite like full throttle shifts in a Lamborghini Aventador, especially one with 769 horsepower. Let's go ahead and put it into Corsa mode, shall we? To put it into manual, there's a button right here in the center console. Now we are in manual shift mode so we can use those beautiful paddles mounted behind the steering wheel. Now, this car is rare. They only made 615 total, 350 coupes, 250 roadsters, and 15 that are at the bottom of the ocean after a container ship burnt to the ground and then <laughs> went into the ocean and 15 other cars were a total loss. 
There's actually only 600 of them now, but pretty crazy story that they actually lost some of those original Aventadors. Zero to 60 happens in a ridiculous 2.6 seconds. And this car accelerates like a bat out of hell. Now, driving wise, it's big, it's wide. It feels like it eats the entirety of the road. If you're looking for a super nimble sports car that's easy to drive, that you can tear up the canyons and tight twisty roads, the Aventador is definitely not the car for you. Get a Huracan STO. But if you're looking for something that has an unparalleled level of drama, a ridiculous driving experience that's showy, it's loud, and looks absolutely insane, then the Aventador Ultima is definitely your ticket. Now, driving this car around town, it does feel more civilized than the SVJ. But the second you start actually accelerating, things start to get absolutely ridiculous. You flick a couple downshifts, you accelerate, and this car is... <laughs> There's really nothing else quite like it. The steering is perfectly weighted, honestly. You don't get a ton of feedback, but what you do get because of the all-wheel drive system is an immense level of confidence. You feel like you can throw this thing into a corner faster than you think is possible, and then you realize you actually could have gone even faster than that. And because we have the rear axle steering, it does make it significantly better to drive around town and at high speeds than the original Aventador until they came out with the S with the rear wheel steering. That car just felt like a pig. It was too big, it was too sluggish on the road, and while it looked amazing and sounded amazing, it was pretty much only good for straight line driving. Now that we have that rear wheel steering, yeah, things have gotten a little bit better. So let's go ahead and get to an area where we can open this thing up and show you what this absolute beast sounds like. It's really intimidating to drive around town. It's so wide and the visibility is so bad. It's just a bit scary. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? You know, all of the negatives of the Aventador pretty much go completely out the window the second you actually floor this thing and experience what it's like. The responsiveness of that naturally aspirated V12 is wild. Oh my god. absolutely incredible about the single clutch gearbox is how it smashes you in the back. The drama is ridiculous. Just look at my neck. Oh, my God. oh that is insane. The overrun, the backfires too. This thing's got an IP exhaust. It was actually the first ever modified exhaust Ultima in the world. Holy crap, this thing is insane. You know, as cars get more and more powerful with forced induction and the hybrid powertrains, obviously this isn't the fastest car in the world in a race, but because of that gearbox, because it slams you in between shifts, it feels significantly faster than the car actually is. There's at no point when I'm accelerating where I'm wishing, man, I this thing really needs way more power. It's not fast enough whatsoever. It's honestly a bit terrifying. It's so loud and so ridiculous and the shifts just catch you off guard that it's just freaking epic. <laughs> and what I can't imagine is having this powertrain in the new Revuelto, we've got the same engine, it revs higher, it produces more power, and then we've got multiple electric motors to give you over a thousand horsepower. That driving experience is going to be absolutely insane. And I'm hoping they code it into the software of the double clutch transmission where it has ignition cut or something of that nature where it does jerk you in between shifts to maintain that drama. I'm sure Lamborghini is going to do that, but I can't wait to get my hands on a Revuelto. Once again, special thanks to Wheels Boutique for making this video possible. This Ultima is absolutely epic. If you're looking for the ultimate machine, for a drama, crazy, exciting experience to take out on the weekend, it's pretty hard to beat this car. If you're looking for a daily drivable supercar, this absolutely is not it. And if you're looking for something that's crazy on the track in tight turns, maybe go for the STO. All right, guys, see you next video.